Hello and welcome back to The Note, which is still coming to you from the CFA Institute's annual conference here in Seattle, Washington. Today, I'd like to deal with the prospects for Africa. Very many times in the past, people have gained in hope that Africa can become the most powerful of the emerging markets. Generally speaking, many of those hopes have been dashed, but there is yet more interest. And my guest today suggests that it's not a bull market or a bear market, but a lion market. He's uh, uh, the head and CEO of Frontline Capital Advisors from uh, Af Accra in Ghana, Clifford Mpare. Clifford, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank now, you very much. if we start by taking a look at projections for GDP growth between yes. now and 2020, quite remarkably, or many people would be surprised, nine of the top 10 countries are from Sub-Saharan Africa. Why are the sources of growth in Africa? Thank you, John. Um, indeed, that is the truth. And if you look at the top 10, India is the, uh, the first uh, country to be projected uh, in terms of its growth rate for 2020. Mm. Apart from India, all the other countries, including Malawi, Kenya, Tanzania, Liberia, are sh all showing very exponential growth by 2020. And the source of the growth mm. is really uh, based on the emerging consumer and also the fact that uh, demographics favor Africa. And thirdly... Um, it has a young really, population that's growing. Yes, yes. Okay, now, the, uh, it's obviously great on many levels if, if we're going to see those levels of growth in Africa, but there isn't necessarily a read-through straight from GDP growth to market growth. If we, take right. a look at, uh, right. if we take a look at this chart that you prepared for us, mm -hmm. uh, you do indeed get an uncorrelated uh, and strong return mm -hmm. from African markets, but boy, do you have to put up with some volatility. Yes. Is this something that's likely to change? What are, what's the investment case for, for Africa? The fact is, uh, the markets in Africa, the stock markets, there are 29 of them. Right. And most of them are small. Uh, you know, Africa has 54 countries in all, and 29 of them have uh, stock exchanges. But apart from South Africa, which has a pretty large stock exchange, most of them have few listed stocks. Right. And that creates volatility in terms of the liquidity that one can expect in these markets. So in terms of expecting a dramatic change in terms of stability, I don't think that is going to happen anytime soon. The fact is the markets can get uh, very attractive at some levels, and when they do get attractive, uh, people certainly want to put their weight behind it and right. push the stocks up so you can have dramatic returns on the upside. Mm. But when things go bad, when valuations get extended or there are some economic issues that come up, then you can get the markets uh, really become a bear market. Okay, now let's take a look. That might suggest that it might be more interesting to look at uh, other forms of investment rather than through public stock markets. What we're looking at here is the return generated on foreign direct investment, yes. and it will surprise a lot of people how strong that is. Yes. Might that also suggest that perhaps private equity is a, is a way to... Uh, access Africa. I mean, wh what are the ways in which Western investors are primarily putting money into uh, African investments at present? Public equity and private equity in Africa is not dramatically different. Right. However, there has been a wave towards private equity in the last several years, and the rationale for that is because of the time horizon that one has to deal with in private equity because private equity investment is usually time bound. Right. You get in for seven years or 10 years. And so that gives the um, investor or the company that is being invested in a little time to prove itself. And the money is left in for a longer period of time as opposed to the very flighty uh, situation that exists in the public equity market where people can put in for a year and then when circumstances do change they may want to get out and that's what gives you the you know the liquidity issues that right. may arise in the public equity market but for the most part i think you know if you want to appreciate the growth that is going on in africa either one it's okay but in terms of 
uh, ensuring that your money is safe and there will not be this incredible volatility, right. private equity tends to be a good way to enter the market. Okay, my, I guess my final question then. Often the problem with private equity is how do you get your money out at yes. the end? Are we talking about uh, private equity managers who are, who are acting almost like management consultants, being very hands-on, and how do they exit at the end? Do they sell to multinationals? Do they, is there the possibility to float on stock markets? How are you getting your money out at the end? You're exactly right. Um, with a private equity, um, once the time is up, then the options of exit are many. The options of exit is to sell to another company. Right. Uh, the options of exit is to sell the um, company back to management and uh, obviously can be floated on the stock exchanges. And that's what we're hoping would happen on the African stock exchanges, that more companies will be listed on the stock exchanges so that liquidity doesn't become a problem as it is today. Okay, Mr. Mpari, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Uh, perhaps there are very good arguments to try being a lion rather than a bull or a bear. Plainly, you have to put up for the time being with elevated volatility in Africa. It does seem to be a place, though, with genuinely legitimate growth prospects and which is genuinely not correlated thus far with other asset classes.